chapter 46. I don't know how long my dad and I looked through that box. I know we looked at a lot of the treasures inside, but not all of them. I know there was a little bit of laughing here and there at funny pictures and silly stuff we'd put in, but not a lot. To be honest, it was mostly crying and plenty of silence. It couldn't have been that long. I mean, we were in the middle of a construction zone after all, and they were totally cool about the whole thing, but they did have a lot to get done, and Gladys gave that cop a bruise, but she didn't exactly give him an extra load of patience when she did it, so I bet it was really only a few minutes that we knelt there, and for the first time in a long time, shared some memories. So I don't know how long it lasted, but I can tell you how long it felt like. It felt more or less exactly like five years. It felt like breath by breath, we fell back and back and back. Back through all those years and all those miles, back away from Coyote and Rodeo and back to just me and my dad. And then I was kneeling there and I was a daughter again. I was a sister again. And Rodeo, or dad really, Rodeo had a wife again, a wife that he missed like oxygen. And he had three daughters again, three daughters that he loved like, like, well, I just guess like dad loves three daughters, which is big and strong enough all on its own and doesn't really need a comparison, really. Eventually, I pulled a photograph out from the stack. It was dusty and bent at the corners, but all the important stuff was there. It was a big family picture. It was me in a tank top, tiny and grinning, and a big gap between my front teeth. Next to me was Ava, tall and pretty, one arm thrown casually over my shoulder, pulling me just a bit off balance, so I was leaning on one foot toward her. Behind us was Dad. Lord, he looked different. I didn't even remember him ever looking that way. Normal clothes, clean-cut hair, trim short, smooth-shaved face. You could see his chin and everything. He was squinting a little because of the sun and he looked easy and happy and young. Next to him was mom. She was right behind me and you could kind of tell I was leaning back against her. She was smiling and there was a little bit of laugh to her smile, like someone had said something funny just before the picture was taken. Rose was in her arms, one hand around mom's neck, perched on her hip, one eye closed against the glare, showing off her baby teeth and a big smile. I held the picture up and I could hear dad breathing beside me, breathing like he'd just come up from the bottom of a lake. I held up the picture and I pointed at Ava. Who is this? I asked my dad and we both knew I wasn't asking who it was. I was asking him to say her name, to say it out loud, to stop running. It was hard, it almost felt cruel, but it was what I needed and I think it was maybe even what he needed. Rodeo swallowed and breathed through his nose. Who is this? I asked again, even quieter than the first time. My voice wasn't slapping him. It wasn't pulling out splinters. It was taking him by the hand. It was pulling him up from where he'd fallen. My dad rubbed his eyes. He tried to say something, but his voice caught and he cleared his throat and tried again, but there was still nothing there. So he took one more breath and tried again, and on a third try, he got it. That's Ava, he said. That's your big sister. I moved my finger to Rose, snuggled up in mom's arms. Who's that? That's your little sister, he answered, and his voice was a scratched out whisper, but it was there. That's Rose. My finger slid to my mom and the picture shook in my hand, but you could still see her despite the shaking, still see her smile, still see her shining eyes, still see my mom. Who's that? It took a couple tries again, but my dad did it. That's your mom, he said. And, and when he said it, he said her name. He reached out with one finger and he touched the picture. He ran his rough finger soft down my mom's arm. And then I asked, who's that? My finger was pointing at him, at my squinting, young, unbroken dad. He sucked in a breath and blew it out with a sigh and shook his head and said, that's me, that's your dad. He said it like he almost didn't quite believe it. He said it sad. He said it like he missed that smiling, clear-eyed man almost as much as he missed the other people in the picture. Or maybe not almost, maybe not even close, but still, he missed him. My finger moved to the last face in the picture. Who's that? I whispered. Who's that, Dad? His arm tightened around my shoulder. Oh, honey bear, he said, and he kissed the top of my head. 
That's you, baby, he murmured into my hair and then kissed me again. That's my daughter, and another kiss, and he said, Ella. And he kept his lips pressed to my head. We sat there like that, me and my dad, me and my dad. And then there was a sound of a throat clearing behind us, and I knew without looking that it was the cop and that our time was up. I appreciated that he only cleared his throat and that he hadn't growled or snarled or said something hard or officious or impatient. I pulled away just enough to look my dad in the eyes and I was relieved to see that his eyes were there with me and they were whole. They were sad and red, but they weren't empty and they weren't far away at all. They were Rodeo's eyes, open and honest and there, but they were my dad's eyes too. I would have smiled, but it wasn't really a smiling kind of moment. I don't know what kind of moment it was really, but I know it was a big kind and a good kind. And in that way, big moments can be good without being happy exactly. I nodded to him and sniffled and he nodded back and rubbed his nose with his arm. And then I put the picture back in the box, laid it gentle like it was made of ash. And then I pulled the lid of the box closed and snapped the latch shut. And my dad stood up. He reached down with his big old hand and took hold of my free one and helped me up. We turned and faced the cop together. The cop was looking serious, but not sour. I mean, he wasn't gonna tell us a joke or anything, but he wasn't gonna slap handcuffs on us either. All right, he said. We're gonna need to get back and have you answer some questions about, uh, he gestured over his shoulder with his thumb, the bus situation. Yeah, Dad said, and he said it soft and easy. I'm sure we will, officer. The officer walked off ahead of us and me and Rodeo followed. I nodded at the workers who were still standing there and waiting and I said a few thank yous, but I stopped in front of Travis and I looked him in the eyes and said a clear and true, thank you, sir. And he just smiled and shrugged and said, heck, I needed a break anyway. And I smiled back and then he said more serious, I'm real glad you found it, miss. And I decided right then and there, that I was a big fan of rough hard fellows who called girls miss. When we passed the ditch, Salvador joined us and walked by my side and gave him a little one-armed side hug and he kind of gave me one back, but mostly he just looked away and blushed a little. I could hear Gladys clopping along behind us and I liked that because it's good to have a friend you can trust at your back. How do you get out? I asked my dad as we walked. Easier than you'd think. Val got on the phone with the folks and it was pretty clear pretty quick that there wasn't any kind of kidnapping going on. That, plus the cop's boss finding out he'd hauled me away and left two miners sitting by the side of the highway, plus the news that you and the bus were gone. Well, the sheriff's office was pretty ready to get me out of there and get you two found him safe. Huh. Val okay? Dad shrugged. More or less. She still feels awful guilty, even though I told her I totally get it. She ain't all that excited to go home, but it sure sounds like her folks might be looking at things a little different now. I think she gave him quite a scare. I nodded. Losing something can sure make you realize how much you loved it, even if you knew you loved it all along. How do you get here? Dad was quiet for a few steps. Then he said, well, she gave me a ride. And he pointed up toward where Yujer was parked and my breath got sucked out of my lungs when I saw her standing there. A little grayer and a little older, but still no doubt, no mistake. My grandma. I gave my dad the box and I took off running, brushing past the cop without slowing. I ran back toward the street right up to my grandma and I wrapped my arms around her so tight. I'd have been afraid of hurting her, except that her arms were around me just as tight. And we stood there tight together, not bothering or needing to say a word. Five years is a long time. And she said, Ella, a few times into my hair like my dad had a minute before. And I said, Grandma a few times too, and then she held me out, her hands on her shoulders, and looked at my face, and I looked at hers. Oh, I missed you, she said, and I did a little laugh sob thing, and I said, I missed you too, and really, it was a pretty stupid thing for both of us to say, because I mean, obviously, but it's okay to say stupid things sometimes, especially if they're true. So on that day at that tore up construction site, I got to be a daughter again, and I got to be a sister again, and I got to be a granddaughter again. And I tell you, those are three pretty fantastic things to be, sadness and all. You know what? I kind of want to take that last sentence back. It feels like the truth, but it isn't, or at least it isn't the whole truth. Because a thing like that, it doesn't happen that easy. It just doesn't. But I can say this. 
on that day at that tore up construction site, I got to start being all those things again. And that's just fine, because I can tell you for a fact that it's a heck of a lot better than to start being those things and then to stop being them. And starts are important. Once upon a times are important. 